Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we were coding our registration component and this is the part 2 of our user registration video tutorial. And in this video tutorial, we will learn how we can create a modal pop-up. Also, we will fix these errors that we see in our console. The first thing that we want to do is go back to our application and initialize our created objects inside the ngOnit method. So let's do that. So I've initialized the four objects that we created initially, one for username, password, the confirmed password and email. In the previous video tutorials where we created the login component, we only used one validator because all the fields in our form were required. But inside the registration form, we are going to use more validations because we have some criteria that needs to be fulfilled. So one of the criteria that needs to be fulfilled is the max length of our username, password, and the max length is the number of characters that you will allow the users to use while they set their username or passwords. So to add a max length validator, all we have to do is inside our array for validation, add the following validators, which is validators.maxlength. And inside the parameters, for the parameters of this max length function, I have set the unit to 10, which means 10 characters are allowed for username and for minimum length, five characters are allowed. So if you have a different requirement, you can change it as per your requirement. And this number here will be used to validate the number of characters that the user types in the field for username. And for the password, I'm going to leave it same as well. So comma here inside the array i'm going to call the validators dot max length and min length function now for the confirm password i don't need to add a max length or min length over here all i need to do is make sure that the confirm password matches the password so if it matches the password then my confirm password criteria is fulfilled now in order to make sure that the confirm password matches the password, we would have to write a separate validation method, a custom validator. And how do we create a custom validator inside a Angular component? So you may be wondering that if there is a method which I can use to compare these two values that is the password and confirm password under validators so inside the validators let's say if i had to access the verbal options for me i don't have a function that can compare two values so that's the reason why i'm going to use a custom validator custom validator is nothing but a method that I'm going to write inside my component and use it here to validate the password field. So let's call this custom validator in our comment. And here we will write the code for custom validator. We'll call this method as must match because our values should match each other. And now inside the must match function, we have to pass a parameter, which is basically the value of our password field. So let's pass a password control. I'm going to call it password control. And what do you think? Should I put this as string? No, we cannot use string over here because we are comparing two form controls. Let's say if this form control was not username and password and we were confirming if the email matches the confirm email field and email is a type of email in input tags. So 
For that reason, we cannot use a string to compare two form controls. Therefore, in Angular, we have something called has the abstract control class. An abstract control class helps us to create custom validators. So when we create the objects, we will use the abstract control data type. So abstract control. An abstract control is available once again under Angular forms. An abstract control is the base class for all forms. Yes, abstract control is the base class for all form groups and form arrays. This allows us to probe for the value of the control. So we can get the value of the control and examine it by using an abstract control type of object. Now there is one issue here since we are comparing password control with confirm password. So I would have to also need the value of confirm password because I need to compare to make sure that these values match each other. So I have added the second parameter inside my custom validator method and here I'm going to write some logic where I'm going to compare these two values and make sure that these two values match each other and if they do I'm going to return true that is these values match each other but now then if I want to use this custom validator inside my form control to validate the control the way I will use it is I'll go to the form control and like any other inbuilt validator I'll call the validator I'll call the custom validator method that I just created which is must match and now inside the must match method I'm going to pass two values in the parameters so one is for the password and one for the confirm password now we are going to get an error here because angular is going to detect a problem the first problem is that we are using two parameters inside the custom validator method we are only allowed to use one parameter inside the custom validator method we cannot use two parameters so when you run this application it's going to give you an error it's going to say that this is you cannot use only one argument is accepted so if you try to use multiple arguments inside your form control validation methods it's going to give you an error so how do we solve this error because our requirement is to compare these two values in order to make sure that they both are matching each other so to fix that the first thing that we want to do is extend our must match method that's the custom validation method with an interface and the interface is called as validator fn once we have imported the extended the method with validator fn interface the import statement will automatically add the validator fn interface to the import statement so what does this validator fn which basically stands for function do so we go to Angular's official website and read the documentation on validator fn. It says that it receives a control and then it returns a validation error if it, any validation error is present in that control. So as we understand, we are going to validate our control and validator fn is going to validate that control for us to check if there are any errors. And the reason to use it here is because we need to validate two parameters that is password and confirm password since we cannot pass the confirm password value inside our validation method we will create a factory method a factory method that will hold the value of the confirm password that we will use to then pass this value to our main method which is the must match method and let's see that how it works so here first thing that we want to do is add a return statement saying what we want to return so here if we notice we have to pass the a control 
or validator fn interface and so let's go ahead and create that control let's call this control as confirm password control and this will be an abstract control so the next thing of validator fn interface requires us is to specify the validation errors basically the return type that it needs to map so if the validation fails it's going to return the validation errors and if there is no errors present then it's going to return null so if there are any errors present what we want to do is return a key and the value true that yes there are errors present and if the validation passes that means there are no errors we want to return null so let's specify the key as a string which will contain the error name and the boolean which is going to be true which means yes the errors are present and null which means no the errors are not present now it's going to return these values to us now what we want to do is use lambda expression and write our logic inside this lambda expression where we will compare the value of these two password and confirm password types so i have added the code that is needed to compare the values so the first condition that we want to check is if the form controls have been initialized if they haven't yet been initialized then we'll simply return null the second condition that we are going to validate is if we already found an error in the previous validation so you're going to add the validation to compare the custom validator that is the must match method after the required method so if the validator the first validator has already found an error where the user has not entered any confirm password then it's going to throw an error saying that the password is required so if it's already found an error then we don't need to go and compare the value with the password so if the first validator already has found an error then we straight away will return null now it finally in the condition here we will verify if the value is equal to the confirm password value so the password control value is equal to the confirm password value and if it is not equal as we are saying here if it is not equal we are going to return a key which is the string and a boolean which is true so which means that the validation here fails so when the validation fails we return true and the error name as the key this is the error name and if there's anything else that has caused some errors we are finally going to return null so that should be it for the custom validator so now we can use our custom validator here inside the validation array for confirm password and then we can call the must match method which is our custom validator and pass the value that we need to compare the password control so which is the password form control and that should be it now what's going to happen is a custom validator will fire off once the required validation has been completed and no errors have been found so now this should be it for this video tutorial since i don't want to make it lengthy and in the next video tutorial we are going to work on the model the model that we require to create a pop-up when there are any errors that are returned from the server response so please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy thank you once again